Yes! Excellent work. Oh, it was much deeper than I thought. All right. We'll get some momentum. Woohoo! <laughs> Good morning, my dear friends. It is Sunday morning and today is the day that I fly to Portugal. Morning pull-ups or push-ups are done, the bags are packed, and I'm ready to leave the cold north behind and head south. Time to go to the airport. Try to wake up from a dream It's harder than it seems Here you can clearly see the hierarchy of this family. The wife is driving, our son is at the front and the two meter tall polar bear is stuffed at the back. This is where I should belong. Coffee, please. Inside a simple song. Let me ask you something. Is there any better or greater feeling in life than the feeling of adventure? Doing things that you enjoy with like-minded people, exploring new cultures and new places. So we have touched down in Portugal. If I look a bit tired, it is because of the jet lag. It has nothing to do with the great Portuguese wine we had last night. The weather is, yeah, but it's okay. We aren't riding until a couple of days. Diogo and his lovely wife picked me up at the airport and took me to this excellent Portuguese restaurant. And we had pork and we had bacalao, we had wine. Yeah, it was excellent. Today, we're just going to explore, yeah, I think the city of Santarém, where Diogo lives, get the bikes ready. And we're actually going to go pick up a Husky FE350 for one of the other guys as well. So here we are at the Husky and Jarvis Signature Tours headquarters in Portugal. So you're not only just a pretty face, you also do the labor. Yes. Whenever nobody volunteers to do to do themselves, I have to. Yeah, but I have to hold the camera. And <laughs> you're someone doing God's and work. You're doing God's work. and someone has to supervise. So yeah, it's just, just supervise. Yeah, that's good. Good job. That's the Portuguese way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's perfect. One thing that I find a bit funny, we or people seem to always look for the fountain of youth, but we already have a fountain of youth, resistance training. You cannot not do that if you want to stay young for as long as possible. Take care of yourself. Good morning, everyone. Day two from Portugal. Last night we were joined by Peter, one of the two guys coming in all the way from Australia to be a part of this thing. And it's so interesting to meet new people. Now I finally understand why you want or need a DR650 with a big fuel tank and a carburetor in Australia. Vastly different from the reality back home <laughs> in Norway. Diogo's wife is downstairs making us breakfast. I am being treated like a king. Diogo is in the garage changing a few tires and I'm up here doing the important work, the YouTube work. So this DR350, a blast from the past, will be my stallion throughout this tour. I mean, look at this, 50 meters from Diogo's house. There's endless of trails, 20 degrees. <laughs> this is just beautiful. All right, Diogo, this was absolutely hilarious to ride, but, but how, do you, how do you dial in the, the amount of traction control and yeah. how, do I, how do I enter the rally mode? This bike actually has a lot of cool features, like the suspension is dynamic, so as you go through the obstacles, like it compresses and decompresses, so that's... Oh, cool. nice. Yeah, this is veal in a stick. This is uh, also veal with the, the chops. This is Dora. I think it's a sea bass. Uh, so this is the local COVID medicine? Yes. How do you say cheers in Portuguese? Um, salud. Salud? Yeah, something like that. Salud. 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 Yeah. That's not how you drink it. <laughs> Too late. Oh. 
Oh, ooh. Bom dia from Portugal, day three of this Portugal tour. So far, it has been nothing but epic. First day of riding, really excited. Waiting for the guys to show up from the hotel and then we are off to the first day of training. The boots are on, as you can hear. And so it begins. Would you look at this, huh? So the rear brake needs to be adjusted. Of what I'm doing, it's the first out of five days on this Portugal tour was a training day where we learned several skills like safely maneuvering our bikes, how to use a strap to pull another bike in case of an emergency, Come on, thank you. technical drills like figure eights and riding between cones. Emergency braking drills using one brake at a time. Skid brakes, elephant turns and uh, power slides. And when everyone was comfortable on their bike and the level of the group was elevated to a tolerable level, we spent the rest of the day riding through the Portuguese woods. Keep your body going forward, prevent the wheeling. Speed! Yeah, good job! I want to introduce you to someone. This is Stuart. A man at the respectful age of somewhere between 65 and 70. And back to what I said earlier in this video. If you stay active and do the things that you love, you will stay young forever. I couldn't have ridden away from Stuart even if I tried. And I got to finally test ride the insanely popular Honda CRF 300L. A bike that I've been wanting to test ride for a long, long time and make a review of to see if it lives up to all the hype. And I, I was not disappointed. This very bike had a YSS aftermarket shock with a stiffer spring and that made a huge difference. The front of the bike is just way too soft if you ride it fast, but on the road it's very plush. In the end, what you get for what you pay is just incredible. It's a lot of bike for not a lot of money. I can't wait to give it some more time in the future. Hey! What? I don't understand Australian with a helmet on. And while you are watching me riding Diogo's XT660, I want to ask you something. Later on this Portugal tour, you will see me riding the Husky FE350. An incredible machine, easily the best off-road bike that I've ever ridden. But the question that I have for you is, is the Husky really worth twice the amount of money as the Honda? Yes, I am comparing apples to oranges, but if you are an average trail rider who doesn't compete, is it really worth twice the money? A question I asked Diogo and we both struggled to come up with an answer. So I have no clue how the microphone does under these conditions but I am following this guy Jote born in Finland raised in the United States riding his PR7 and these playgrounds wow it is just beyond what I, 
everything and anything that I've ever done before on a motorcycle. This is just trails, trails, trails. And there's sand, and there's trees, and hill climbs. This is paradise, really. This is paradise. I could not have more fun on a motorcycle than what I'm doing right now. Ooh, a tree. And I'm riding Diogo's own personal bike. To probably not crash it, right? Oh. <laughs> This Yamaha XT Z660 is not stock. It has WP suspension in the front and in the rear. All right, excellent. <laughs> How do we get there? That's a good question. We want that. Oh. There we go. What an amazing place. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, it was thorns. It was thorns. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'll, I'll come. Yeah, but I need to be able to pick up my own bike, you know? Oh, fucking nice. Uh, oh, you picked it up with quite. Oh, all right, this was epic. Oh, sorry, Diogo. Sorry very much. Oh, oh. <laughs> Look at this beautiful place. This is so extremely different from back home. And very useful and informative day one of this Portugal tour. We are heading home. The sun is about to go down. We have been riding everything from single track to sand. We've been practicing emergency braking. Yeah, what else? Slow technical riding it has been very useful and a lot of fun I am absolutely loving this and it seems like the rest of the guys are as well and we could not ask for a better guide Diogo doing a fantastic job with his energy knowledge humor yeah it is just perfect now we're heading home definitely need a shower and then we go out for some dinner and Portuguese Wine. See you all tomorrow. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurry and to cut my teeth. I can take what I need to get by. Doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great Good morning morning from Portugal My day four in this country Day two of motorcycle riding Struggling a bit with a stomach virus Yesterday we ate Chinese And I ate till I was full And then I ate some more And then I had cake I guess I was asking for it But I've been given some local medicine And I'm sure we'll be all right so that didn't go as planned. Two hours into the ride, I was just miserable, stomach was terrible. I decided to abandon the group and get back home. On way home, I puked in the helmet, then I stopped and puked some more. Things came out of the backside as well, I dropped my glove in the vomit. It was just as miserable as it sounds. Now I need some rest, see you all tomorrow. All right, good morning. I have woken up from the dead. Yesterday was absolutely terrible, but I'm happy to say that I feel a lot better today. One of the other guys is bad as well, and one third guy has um, dislocated ribs after a crash, so we have to improvise slightly, but that's, that's how it is, right? The hardcore riders of the group will continue the tour, and the two soft ones, me and Chris, with allegedly the norovirus, will stay behind, and then we will continue when we have rested some more. All right, we are on our way. The group is split in two. The ones who felt fine and could continue off-road riding, they left this morning. And this group is the ones who are not feeling fine. Two of us puked our brains out last night. 
third guy crashed and bruised his ribs. So we are going to ride on the road on our way to the next hotel and meet up with the rest of the gang. So we decided to ride on the road, which I have to be honest, I do not mind because just riding here, even though it's on pavement, it's so, it's so incredibly different from Norway. And I just value that. Look at this place. So this, if I'm not mistaken, is the river Teju. And the city over there is Almiron. Yeah, you just have to make the best of it. Diogo is doing a fine job making sure that everyone is doing fine. And yeah, getting the most out of the trip here to Portugal. I had a feeling that the thing is all gone. Hold on, put me together, take me back where I belong. I want it all. I had a feeling, but the feeling is all gone. of Vida. This is where we slept tonight and today is the fourth day of riding. The roads leading up to this town was spectacular. It was rolling hills and countryside on each side and today we're actually going to ride across mountains if I'm not completely mistaken. I am feeling better, Chris is feeling better, the guy with the ribs is feeling much better so this is this is just fantastic. Looking forward to today and look at the weather. And up there on the hill is a small house. If I could take you back to my youth and show you what I wish I knew. So I am obviously an off road oriented guy, right? And uh, Diogo is as well, off road, of course. It's in, it's in the name, right? But I have to admit, even though we've been riding on tarmac yesterday and a bit today, I don't mind. I don't mind because it's so exotic to see a place so different from what I'm used to back home that I just, and I probably said this yesterday as well, but I just, <laughs> I just appreciate the difference. Just so interesting to see how different it is from back home. So even though we ride some tarmac because of sickness and whatnot, I don't really care. But when we do hit the trails like this, like five minutes away from the hotel, I have to say, I feel at home. Alright, I'm back on Diogo's bike, which feels much better standing up, but I have to be careful because this bike is heavier. It's 220 kilograms fully fueled, whereas the DR is more like, yeah, 135 or something. I'm not falling on camera. <laughs> now I am following Franz from the Netherlands. He is using Diogo's Honda CRF. 300L and just before this trip he ordered his whoa he's ordered his own 300L rally and uh, he's been road racing for some time but this is I think this is the second time ever that he is riding off-road and I must say I am very impressed at how quickly he gets a hold of this and he's riding very good as you can see This is just paradise, para, para, paradise. <laughs> Good riding. Thanks. Good riding, man. Yes, All right, another morning ramble from Johannes this beautiful day. I'm finally starting to feel like my old self, the one who never stops talking. And I just want to say that if I lived in a place like this, I would not have sold my 701 and bought a T7. I love my T7, don't get me wrong, but there's just so many trails wherever you, you decide to ride here in Portugal. And for trails like these, you do want a lighter, more capable bike than 
the T7. <laughs> the guys are contemplating climbing that hill. To you, Stuart, I say good luck. Do it. I will. Okay. Not me. On his beautiful PR7, I like it. <laughs> more, more gas, more gas. Yeah, much more gas. More Easy gas. for us to say down here, but. Oh, nice. Hey, beautiful. Excellent. Oh. XT perfect. <laughs> it was taller from up here than I thought. Holy moly, that's that is <laughs> that is tall steeper than I thought. It's a good training here. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was funny. This is a 200 kilogram bike. It's not. It's not the DR anymore. just have to get one myself. No, I'm just joking, but whoa, it's just it's so easy to ride. It'll be a jungle race here, all right, I get it. 350 FE Husky versus the PR7. The much better rider in front, but I have a lot to prove because I have the camera. <laughs> just joking. Ride what you can see. Oh. adjusting quite well to the PR7. I am not letting you get away, my friend. <laughs> I can try, but I can try harder. Yeah, I, I can imagine, but please don't. I'm recording, so it makes me look... Is it, how, how, do you, oh. how does it feel compared to the 701? It's, it's similar, but I, I enjoy this one a bit more. I do. I, I think I, I feel the same. Yeah. The, P, the 701 feels like a long bike that is not so maneuverable. This yeah, kind of I agree. And the, the throttle response is much more smooth and mellow. Okay. And throttle response for me is my biggest pet peeve. So yeah. 
As soon as I got off the PR7, everyone was asking me, how does it compare to the 701, Johannes? And that is a very good and valid question. But instead of comparing the PR7 to the 701, I'd rather share my thoughts about the PR7 as a lightweight adventure bike. Previously on this tour, I rode the Diogo's XT, which weighs in at somewhere between 200 and 220 kilograms with a full tank of fuel. And that is a typical adventure bike. And I also rode the DR350, a typical dual sport. So where does really the PR7 fit into the adventure segment? Or the 701 or the 690? They are not dual sports, they are too heavy, one could say. They are not adventure bikes, they're not comfortable enough on the road, at least in my experience, that's why I sold my 701. So do they really make sense being like in the middle of the two groups? I think these in-betweeners makes a lot of sense if you live in a place like Portugal, where there are trails everywhere, but you also need to cover some tarmac to get to them. A typical adventure bike could quickly become too heavy because there's a lot of mud and hill climbs and a dual sport like the FE350 is way too uncomfortable on the road. So for a trip like this, a bike like the PR7 or the Husky 701 is like the perfect mix. It all depends on where you ride and the trails that you have available. And now that I've established where the PR7 fits in the adventure continuum, did I like it? <laughs> I absolutely loved it. The suspension was incredible, the engine was powerful, but perhaps the one thing that I liked the most, the one thing that the PR7 has over the 701, is the throttle response. Very mellow, no jerkiness, a pure joy to ride. I'm just loving this. Oh man. Town looking for a place to eat lunch and we're following this random guy on his Yamaha TW200 actually and he's going to show us to a place you can see him at the front there with the t-shirt and the motocross helmet following a shadow down to the graveyard I wanna say a prayer gonna pay my dues I've been running wild ever since I left Virginia Trying to find a face that might be mine So we have stopped at a mountain town called Ameshueira. The guys are getting something to eat and just look at this view. I know it's not that spectacular on an iPhone, but the mountains, we've just been riding across them. What a day, what a day. Sang another song for the ones in sorrow. Sing about the smiles that they'll never see. Sing about a love who's over across the mountain. Tell her that I love her. I don't you tell about me. Tell about me. And after a hefty lunch, we continued towards our next destination. And this very destination, a town in a valley made completely out of stone, was easily one of the highlights of this trip. The name of this town was Piudao. I probably butcher that name like the tourist I am. And the roads leading up to this town completely made out of stone was absolutely spectacular. <laughs> Hello adventurers indeed, you I 
I absolutely don't mind standing here for a second waiting for the guys. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Look at that place. Pio Dao. I think that is where we're going to stay for the night, if I'm not mistaken. City down in the valley. Wow, look at that. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. All right, so we made it to Pio Dao, I think. The whole city is made of the stone behind me. And today's riding was out of this world. Anything you can imagine that you can do on a motorcycle, we did today. And I rode the PR7, I rode the CR Ref, not today, but I rode the XT, the DR. Wow. This it was amazing, amazing day. Hello, Bill. Hello. Are you lost? No, mate. <laughs> Every street is similar. Yeah, I'm just enjoying the view. Yeah, wow, look at this. It is cool, isn't it? Sing another song for the ones in sorrow. Sing about the smiles that they'll never see. Sing about a love that is across the mountain. Tell her that I love you. Don't you tell her about me. Seven countries, Norway, England, Portugal, Finland, Australia, Germany, and the Netherlands. The only thing that we had in common prior to coming together was love for motorcycles. Yet here we are in a completely foreign land, riding on completely foreign roads together sharing this journey like we were brothers it's beautiful that is exactly what it is beautiful good morning from a very small town in okay i should probably not stand here and talk the dogs are barking the whole night yeah yeah i get it i get it uh, the other guys they slept in the previous town and we slept here in this very beautiful small house uh, yeah because of reasons but anyways the final day is about to begin the weather seems to be nice yeah just bom dia yeah a new day ready to ride Alright, so the three of us are on our way back to the town of Piudao, where you saw the drone shots. Amazing town, the whole town made of stone. Uh, meeting up with the rest of the guys there to have breakfast and then we'll continue the day. This is the final day of riding. Which is, yeah, it's bittersweet. It's sweet because I uh, I do miss I do miss Norway for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but I miss I miss my family. But I yeah, it's, it's early in the morning, and that's when your thoughts are the most emotional, uh, I guess. And it's bitter because this has been absolutely epic in every sense of the word. Adventure. This race going down to the city of Puidao, 
we are shut our, our bikes down and this is a rolling race Diogo on the Husky is behind me and Chris on the CRF he's doing a good job I should probably win this because I have the most weight but uh, I have the least amount of cojones so yeah so far in the middle doing fine pretty interesting because I can hear the hear the traction from the front tire in the corners look at that wow <laughs> that is where the boys are or the other guys are staying this night oh 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 I don't have enough momentum hey cheating <laughs> see you <laughs> <laughs> Should I roll the fastest because I'm heaviest? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Race. I have achieved many great things in life. I become a father. I serve my country. But this has to be the biggest one. Winning the rolling race of Puidao. We are at the finish line. Yes. Yes. I got it. <laughs> oh. Good morning, fellas! <laughs> oh, the final day begins. The weather was supposed to be fine today, but I guess it is what it is. We've had rain before, it's not dangerous, it's just a bit unpleasant. <laughs> Come to Portugal, you said. Yes, it's gonna be very good weather, it usually is. It will be sunny, you said. Yeah, but this is good because if it was too sunny, then it would be feel hot and, you know, sweaty. Okay. This is so much better, isn't it? This is a part of the experience. Can you show the point of view? Yeah, it's like... Uh, lovely village over there. Uh, beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it's all grey. Oh. Must go on! The rain has stopped and I am back on the PR7. Everything is as it should be. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jota, for lending me your awesome bike. Let's go find some off-road trails and make this an epic day, just like yesterday. One thing that I really like about this bike is the suspension. It, it's like a mix between adventure and, I guess, motocross suspension. Riding over these small rocks here, I can't feel them. It just soaks them up. Like the first initial two centimeters off the travel is just like perfect. And then when you ride a bit faster and you hit some bigger stuff, it, it doesn't bottom out, bottom, uh, bottom out. It's, it handles the trail as well as the bigger hits. And that's not something that I've been, I guess, used to that much. Uh, the 701 did to a certain degree. The T7 doesn't, I think. Uh, Diogo's XT is, is very good at softening road like this out but the bigger hits it's you feel those more than you do on this bike you definitely whoa Chris are you all right Perfect. that's good to hear are you also a believer of the Suzuki DRs able to climb trees or yes this is not the first time I see this Physically, yeah. No, no, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm just That's undressing so I don't. Okay. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> so, Johan, I just came. I, I spent the last two or three days, or four days, or whatever, on the FE350 Uskvarna. Loving the bike in general. It's a bike that makes things really easy. But now I just switched bikes with Jote. He's on. He was using this DR350. And the difference, it's ah, oh, it's unbelievable. Like that, it feels. I am about to jump on the Husqvarna FE350, and here I am discussing with the Portuguese version of Ryan Fortnite, comparing the FE350, a competition bike or a performance-oriented bike, with the Dual Sports DR350 and the Honda CRF 300L. And I got to test ride the Husky a few days prior to this tour around Diogo's hometown. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the high strung nature and stiff suspension. But that was all about to change. 
Getting a hang of this FE 350 now, and this is just <laughs> it is incredibly capable. It's just so responsive to braking, and it doesn't wallow around like a heavier bike. It's just, just you can just point it in the direction you want to go, and it will go there. And even the the, the PR7 is, is a Oh, I can't find the rear brake. <laughs> the lever is so small. Uh, even the, the PR7 is such an amazing bike. Just there's a huge difference. These, I think it's 55, 60 kilograms in difference is just, yeah. Obviously two different kinds of bikes, but still it's interesting to experience the difference between these bikes. I started this Portugal tour by being impressed with the Honda CRF 300L. Then I was even more impressed when I test rode the AGP PR7. But neither of these bikes are drastically different from bikes that I have experience with in the past. I've owned both the DRZ and the 701. The bike that really impressed me was the Husqvarna FE350. And as I said earlier, I initially didn't like this bike. It wasn't until I started to ride it a bit harder, still only perhaps 10% of what it's capable of, but 110 of what I am capable of, the bike started to make sense. The weight, the handling, the brakes, the acceleration, the torque, it was just a complete hoot to ride. I did things on this bike that I am not capable of doing. How good is this, huh? <laughs> Rally Portugal, amateur rally. Ah, thank you, thank you, Jote. <laughs> ah, this bike just endless amount of traction and power. It's, it's unbelievable, really, unbelievable. I do find bikes very interesting to dissect and share my opinion and compare with the other bikes, talk with the other guys as well. And this bike, the Husky FE 350, I, I rode it around Diogo's house a few days ago, did not like it because it was way too aggressive, not a mellow bike at all, but for this kind of stuff and the rougher parts, it's just amazing. Incredible amount of power. And it's, it's very down low as well, it's, it's torquey and powerful, it's just in a package that's just way too light, it's, it's very, <laughs> it's interesting to, to ride a bike this capable, it's, uh, I understand why they use this chassis, I think for rally riding, I guess they, um, yeah, they, they stiffen up the, the frame for the fuel tanks and it, it does add some weight, but still, yeah, this is just amazing. And while you are watching me ride the Husky FE350 on these amazing Portuguese trails, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Riding the Husky FE350 opened my eyes to something I haven't experienced before, a whole nother level of capability. Ever since I test rode this bike in Portugal, I have been thinking about it. And I have reflected a lot over what exactly is it that makes the FE350 this capable. Could it be the tires? Well, perhaps, but the other bikes had good tires as well. Could it be the suspension? Well, the PR7 has really good suspension, but it's nowhere nearly as capable as the FE350 in the dirt. The only thing that comes to mind and makes sense is the low weight. 105 kilograms with as much power as the T7. Now that's a good combination. <laughs> this is insane. It's completely nuts, this bike. I 
to brake later, give more gas, lean further. So a lot of good things. And it's it's not only the the lower weight. I think it's a combination between a, a good engine frame. Yeah, talk about things that I really don't know not much about. But yeah, good experience to say the least. Good experience. Want one? Yes. Buy one? Probably not. <laughs> I guess all good things must come to an end. The bikes are washed, the bags are packed, Portugal tour is now over. We are about to head to the airport and I've said goodbye to most of the guys. This has been absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to get back here in Portugal and ride at these magnificent and awesome trails and beautiful landscape. Just like that, I am back home. An adventure of a lifetime comes to an end, but the memories will live on forever. Chris, Stuart, Bill, Peter, Jota, Franz and Diogo, thank you very much for making this happen. And thank you for watching. Good night.